to another video. I am tuning in today from Nairobi, which is in Kenya, which is in Africa. So we are very far away from home, but we have made our own home away from home here in Nairobi for the past month. We have been doing a little digital nomading tour throughout Africa, and Nairobi has been an absolutely wonderful stop. So first up, I'm gonna give you a little tour of our Airbnb the apartment complex and what it looks like inside. I have to say this is probably one of the top three Airbnbs we've ever stayed in. And if you've been following along the journey, you know that we hop month to month through Airbnbs. So we've been to a lot of them at this point and this one has been really special. It is just very open, has a ton of natural light, has spacious bedrooms it's actually a very spacious place in general and we've loved it loved it loved it so let's take a look this airbnb was located in a luxury apartment complex because kenya's prices are cheaper than what we're used to back home in the states or even in europe we stayed well within our monthly accommodations budget and truly felt like we hit the jackpot with this place apartment tour time oh boy here we go check out our home <laughs> At the entrance of the complex, there was a gate and security desk for check-in. That's the area where we would go pick up our food delivery from Glovo. Then once you entered inside the complex, there was a gym and a pool that everyone who lived here could use. elevator up to our Airbnb and it was a gorgeous two-bedroom apartment. The apartment is very open and spacious and flooded with natural light and there's a great view of the city right from the balcony. This unit had a full kitchen which was fantastic and very functional and there were two bedrooms with two bathrooms which is not something we normally have in our Airbnbs when we nomad. We usually just condense down to the bare minimum so this was a treat to be able to spread out. One bedroom was obviously used for sleeping and then the other we used for extra workspace, storage, or packing. So that wraps up the Nairobi Airbnb tour. We really loved this Airbnb and I'm so grateful this is where we ended up staying and it will definitely remain high on the list as a all-time favorite. So up next I'm going to show you something really special and that is called the Giraffe Center. So the Giraffe Center is located here in Nairobi and it's a conservation effort to help the endangered Ross Shield giraffes. At the Giraffe Center they do a really good job at taking care of these animals and also educating their guests about them. Very, very cool and very special. So I wanted to give you a little tour of the Giraffe Center. Hello from Nairobi, Kenya. I can't believe I just said that. We are really out here in phase two. It's our first weekend and we are at the Giraffe Center, which I'm really, really looking forward to. Giraffes are one of my favorite animals. I believe this is also where Giraffe Manor is. You probably have seen that online. It's a hotel um, where the giraffes are right there. We're not staying there this time, but the Giraffe Center gives us an opportunity to be up close and personal and see some giraffes. some snacks for the giraffes so let's go feed them no Stephen you cannot eat that <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> 
distinctly remember someone saying they're not a hat person. Still not a hat person. <laughs> Gotta get a hat in every country. <laughs> Safari Steven. Safari Steven. It's like Safari Barbie. <laughs> Pumba. The young book. Very nice. Thanks. <laughs> The Draft Center specifically cares for the endangered Ross Shield drafts, as there are only about 2,100 of these drafts remaining. Most can live up to age 10 to 15 out in the wild, while in captivity they can live to about 20 to 28 years old. The adult males can grow up to 16 to 18 feet, weighing around 3,000 pounds, while adult females grow up to about 14 to 16 feet, weighing around 2,500 pounds. Babies, on the other hand, are born around 6 feet tall, weighing 100 to 120 pounds. Another fun fact I love about these drafts is they only sleep 5 to 45 minutes within a 24 hour span. The Ross Shield drafts can be distinguished from the reticulated or the Maasai drafts because they have no markings on their lower legs and they're also taller than the other species. Well, this is a grade A pun. Souvenir shop. That's so good. That was very magical. I think we only spent about an hour, hour and a half here. Um, it's definitely a warm up, but it was so fun to feed the giraffes. They're so cute. I got a bit overheated. I felt like a little woozy, but you know, bought some water. Um, you can't bring plastic water in here, you can't bring your own, so um, we had to buy some here, which is fine. Um, cooled down, went to the gift shop, Steven got his safari hat, I actually got a really cute little fleece that I'm sure I'll be wearing um, on the cooler nights. And then we learned a little bit about the drafts in the educational center, and now we're gonna catch our little Uber home. This was super fun. Um, again, great warm up, great kickoff to Nairobi, and it's a good little taste before we do our actual African safari. So I'm just so grateful we're here. This is amazing. All right, I will talk to you soon until our next adventure. Now that we've seen giraffes, we have another very special animal to talk about, and that would be the elephants. Here in Nairobi, there is the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust where they actually have an elephant orphanage. At this organization, they will take in these elephants and raise them until they are old enough to go back into the wild. So let's go to Sheldrick Wildlife Trust because I want to show you how cute these baby elephants are and there was even a baby rhino. I know. Kicking off our day at Sheldrick Wildlife Trust, we got to meet Raha, the baby black rhino. Raha means joy, and it is truly a joy that she survived. Raha was abandoned and found in September 2022 when she was extremely tiny, probably only about a week old. Rhino calves are very vulnerable to predators, and Raha had been attacked, causing a lot of serious injuries on her backside, and even her towel had been bitten off. The Sheldrick Wildlife Trust found her and took her in, and although her body was struggling at first, they got her stable and her little spirit came back charging. She's still very young now, but in a few years they are hoping to release her back into the Nairobi National Park with the other black rhinos who live there. She's got a blanket covering her to keep her warm because the weather has not been good early morning. When they're out and wild, she'll always be next to the body of the mother and she'll get some heat from the mother. And since she does not have a mother, we are taking the role of the mother, and that's why we have to improvise something to make sure that they are safe. All the babies you're going to see here today are orphans. All have been rescued from different parts of the country, and all have different reasons for being orphans. Some of them, we know exactly what has caused them to be left orphans, and others, we are really not very sure. But since the others were found when they were still at a very young age, at an age where they would not have survived without the mother's milk, 
and also without protection against the dangers. That is why we had to come in and help rescue them. They <laughs> want some tea. <laughs> oh, talented. Oh, oh, oh. You elephant orphan here has a story and they're all shared in detail on the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust website. If you'd like to read more or even donate to the cause, I will put the website in the video description below so we can all support these beautiful babies. So the activity we did in Nairobi today is the Sheldrick Wildlife Trust, which is basically a rehabilitation center for baby orphaned elephants, and they have a few rhinos as well. So a lot of these babies were orphaned, you know, whether their mom died of natural causes, poaching, or being hunted by other animals, baby elephants and their moms are really never separated. So if there's a baby elephant by itself, this organization will come in and help rescue the baby. And they try to get them rehabilitated and back into the wild in about three to five years. They will introduce them back slowly and bring them for a day, a few days, a week. And then once they stay for about a month, then they successfully have made it back into the wild. So we got to see a little, little baby rhino and also about 22 elephants. So they're all little, they're all really cute and playful and this was really fun. The only thing about coming here is it's a little bit complicated. Definitely allot yourself a lot of time to get here beforehand because it's a bit confusing. The website's a bit confusing. So book via email then pay the national park fee online east citizen kenya for the nairobi national park and then in cash you will pay for the sheldrick wildlife trust once you get here so anyways wonderful little place to come for the day great experience and definitely something you should add to your list for nairobi also make sure you wear shoes that you don't mind getting muddy because it happens <laughs> After we spent some time scraping some serious mud off our shoes and getting some additional support from the very kind staff, we read a little bit more about the orphan stories and decided to quote unquote adopt one of the animals. the rhino Raha but you can adopt any of the rhinos or the elephants um, it's 50 US dollars for the whole year so we thought that was really worthwhile and now we're gonna get little updates via email about how Raha and all of the elephants are doing so 
I'm so excited. <laughs> I love these animals. So after we had our morning at Sheldrick Wildlife Trust, we had already paid for the Nairobi National Park fee. So we thought that we could spend a little extra time there and there are opportunities to go on game drives. So we ended up getting connected with the driver and got to take a game drive through Nairobi National Park. What was really unique about doing a game drive here is that of course it's very expansive there's lots of wildlife it is a huge giant park but then you can also see the city skyline right behind all the wildlife and all the landscape so it was sort of a best of both worlds situation going on there so let's take a look let's go see some animals and go on a game drive through nairobi national park here we go again to pay for the National Park to enter the Shelter Wildlife Trust. So, since you're already in here, you can do a game drive. So, that's what we're doing. How fun! We're back at it again. Back at it again. Six years ago, yeah. Wow, and it's still there. It's still there. The, the little thing is uh, tall. Wow. Yeah. Amazing that the horn is mm -hmm. attached to the skull. Yeah. Today our driver's name was Moses, and he did such a great job helping us spot so many different animals. I wasn't sure if we were going to see as much wildlife at Nairobi National Park because it was so close to the city, but that couldn't be further from the case. We saw so much, as well as some unique species that we didn't even see back at Masai Mara. This was definitely a worthwhile game drive, especially if you're staying in Nairobi. Masai Mara vlog, I gave you a few fun facts about some of the animals like giraffes, elephants, and lions. So in today's vlog, let's talk about zebras. Zebras are closely related to horses and well known for their black and white stripes. The stripes help regulate their body temperature as well as confuse predators. And no two zebra's stripes are the exact same. Like a human fingerprint, the pattern of a zebra's stripes are all unique. Zebras stick together in herds, and some of their most common predators are lions, leopards, hyenas, and cheetahs. Although they often end up as other animals' lunch, they do know how to put up a very good fight. of 
the big five that we didn't see on our Masai Mara safari was the rhino, so we were thrilled when we got to see some rhino at Nairobi National Park. Big Five includes rhinos, lions, elephants, buffalo, and leopards. Originally, the Big Five referred to the most difficult animals to hunt on foot in Africa. But now, since there are more strict regulations on poaching, it's more of a spotting game to find all five animals out on safari. And then the last thing I want to show you is that Nairobi actually is a really cool city vibe and it has some really trendy restaurants. So we went to Nairobi Street Kitchen, which was so impressive to me. There's artwork everywhere. It's one of those places where you can go and try foods from all different stands. They have everything from Indian food to Thai food to pizza to ice cream. They had it all. So we went here for lunch on one of our last days and we also got to spend some time with our friend Ruth who is local to Nairobi. So she has some incredible insights about traveling to Kenya and I got to sit down with her for a few minutes and have a little chat so I could introduce you guys to her. Hello everybody. So we are in Nairobi in Kenya and for lunch today we went to Nairobi Street Kitchen which is absolutely fabulous. Thank you for the recommendation. Um, there are all of these different little restaurants. It's very trendy. There's outdoors, indoors, very cool. Um, but I have a very special guest today in the vlog. This is our friend Ruth. She's from Nairobi. And I just, we've been having so much fun talking all things Kenya and traveling and life. And I just wanted to have her on the vlog because I know that um, coming to Kenya and to Africa in general is it can be intimidating for people from, you know, the U.S. or far off places. So, Ruth, what would you tell people who wanted to come to Kenya or Nairobi? Yeah, any advice that you would give anybody who is coming here? Oh, uh, hi! Thank you so much, and thank oh, you for course. being a great friend. Oh, and you too. <laughs> <laughs> you are amazing people. Like meeting you and Jay and Steve, uh, it's just an honor. It's just like. I'm happy. I'm so happy. Oh, no me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I told them. And uh, first of all, I'll start. Kenya is uh, so secure. Let me start with that. Mm -hmm. Like to make everyone feel comfortable. It's a country that it's so developed in so many ways. Like technologically, we are so developed. Like it's a beautiful country. It's, it's a very beautiful country in Africa. Uh, wildlife, the beaches. Uh, it won't like you're so diverse even with the food we are so like we have different cuisines and you're going to enjoy the country yeah. and there's so much to see it's a country of a dream come true so if you want to enjoy the animals to see all the animals come and see them here if you want to visit the beaches you have the a whole coastal region where you're going to see the beaches and enjoy all the foods there and people are so kind here people are so generous like from the moment you land to the country you just meet friendly people and yeah it's just a home a home a home away from home yeah let me say that i love that yeah. so much <laughs> yes. it's true you have everybody has been so welcoming here and yes. especially you you've been really helpful <laughs> for you. us learning about how to navigate in kenya if you were out seeing the wildlife, what animal are you most excited to see when you're out there? So myself, I love the giraffe, let me be honest, because it's so beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I love how they know they're beautiful and even how they walk. <laughs> they do and know they're beautiful. <laughs> they know they're beautiful and also the elephants, let me say that, but most people love the elephants when they come here. Mm -hmm. But I'm more passionate with the giraffe and the I love the cats. I love the cats and more. I have the, the, the cheetahs, the lions, and all that. Yeah. I'm not weird when I'm loving the lions. <laughs> it's only that I love cat animals. Yeah. yeah. yeah the um, cat family. Yeah. Yeah. They're so cool. Last question. If you're coming to Nairobi, yeah. what would be your top recommendations? So, when you come to Nairobi, the first thing I would recommend is to do like uh, a city tour, honestly. Cool. So that you can have like an idea of how the Nairobi city or how the how we how we are the way we are right now Kenya where we are right now you have like a better understanding of where you are and then 
after that like having like road trips seeing like the landscape in the countries like visiting like places outside Nairobi yeah that's what I was saying yeah amazing yeah and also the restaurants <laughs> There are so many restaurants yeah, here. So many restaurants. I feel like we didn't even scrape the surface, but the ones we've been to have been excellent. Yes. So, yeah, very fun, like trendy atmospheres. Yeah. I love it. But yeah, so thank you for coming on the vlog and just and for spending time with us. I know thank that yeah. you know life is busy, but it's so fun to have friends all over the world. We've had so much fun. Yeah. So. And for myself, it's always like an honor, like meeting new people. Like even when I was growing up, I never thought that I would be in this industry where yeah. I'm meeting people like from different. Even having the confidence, let me say, having the confidence like to be uh, outspoken, like to people outside like the country, something with most Africans and uh, it's an honor, let me say that, yeah. And also like meeting people who have like great energy, it's so nice, yeah. I and also party when you come to my room, to Kenya. We love party. <laughs> you do love partying. We love Ruth partying. loves going to the clubs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, we actually met because our friend Zach, who was in our Morocco vlog, he did a remote year program here in Nairobi and Ruth was one of the local guides so you know we stayed in touch that connected us together and now we have a new friend and it's just been so fun we've gotten to go here to Nairobi Street Kitchen and another restaurant and you've helped us significantly with planning our safari trips too so it's been amazing Thank you so much, Ruth. Welcome. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Jess. We've yeah. had the best time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> visual tour of Nairobi Street Kitchen. Again, it was very artsy and colorful and all of the food we got was so good. We tried some chicken quesadillas, raspberry cheesecake, and not pictured some Thai green curry. Everything was excellent. And then some final Nairobi recommendations before we go would be to visit the Karura Forest to see the waterfall and eat at the beautiful River Cafe. Another suggestion would be dining at the Palette Cafe, which is a garden cafe in Nairobi where the staff members are deaf. This provides a unique training and employment opportunity for those with a disability within the food service community. brunch and cake for an aesthetic dining experience with beautiful food presentation. <laughs> As you can probably tell from this vlog, Nairobi has been a truly special destination. I'm so glad that we got to spend one of our months here on our very special itinerary, going through Africa and traveling the world. There are of course many other things to do in Nairobi, but the things we did, I'm really, really thankful we got to experience them and that I got to share them with you today. 
So if you want some more Kenya content, we do have some safari vlogs up on my page. So definitely check those out. If you enjoyed this video today, please subscribe to my channel and feel free to share any of these travel vlogs with any friends that you have that you think would resonate with these different destinations. I love to be able to share all of our discoveries as we travel through the world. And one of the best parts is getting to travel along with all of you. So thank you so much again for being here. I hope you enjoyed getting a little peek into Nairobi and I'm so excited to see where the road takes us next. Mm -hmm.